The steeper the slope of the downgrade gets, the less you will be able to detect that you are sliding. Eventually, you will be in free fall, and at that time, you will be pleased to call it flying. <laughs> Introduction. I would draw your attention to the screenshot I've included along with this post. I've placed it here for a number of reasons, which I will outline in a helpful fashion below. Let me start by introducing the characters. To the left is a fellow named Chaston, ordinary gay person, and to the right is Pete Buttigieg, one-time candidate for president and now Secretary of Transportation for the Biden cartel. This would put him in charge of all the train wrecks all over around the country, which is fitting somehow, and perhaps he will assume responsibility for the train wreck that is the whole Biden, you know, the thing. Just a short time ago, Buttigieg made a historic mark by becoming the first openly gay candidate not to be elected president, although I suppose there is a sense in which lots of openly gay individuals have not been elected president. They've been doing that for quite a long time, actually. The second curious thing that comes to mind is why the heck are they sitting on a hospital bed? Did they kick the birth mother out of it for the photo op? But these are strange times, and I suppose it is possible that the hospital bed now identifies as a love seat in their living room or someplace more reasonable and fitting. Maybe that's it. But the screamer, the thing that made me decide to write on this, is the name at the top of this screenshot. That name is Boz Tavidjian, and he is numbered among those who liked this particular monstrosity. And I bring this up to point out just how far the diseased rot of the evangelical downgrade has spread. Billy Graham's grandson can do something like this, and absolutely nothing will happen. No one at Christianity Today will get their knickers in a twist. The headquarters of the National Association of Evangelicals will not be fielding phone calls about it, demanding that they issue a statement. No, he will be taken to task by some blogger headquartered in northern Idaho, a man with dubious taste in adjectives, but nothing else untoward is going to happen. Nothing. Yawn. By the way, for those of you true bluers who started to worry because of my use of the euphemism gay above, instead of something more strident, you need not be concerned. The day is early, and I'm still warming up. What's my platitude with your host, Pat Answers? Boz Tavidjian has a Twitter feed that should be called something like Bromides from the Soft Left. If you can't see what is going on, it is because you have a condition that optometrists like to call blindness. Boz Tavidjian. Professing Christians who label others almost exclusively as a biblical Christian or anti-Christian embrace a worldview that simply objectifies others so that they can feel right and safe. At the end of the day, it's nothing but old-fashioned self-righteousness. Right, got to dispense with that pesky category of biblical Christian. If we do not rise up immediately and deal with this scourge, what shall the harvest be? But make no mistake, there is such a thing as old-fashioned self-righteousness, and it does exist within the ranks of conservative biblical Christianity, and we do need to be rebuked for it. We need for Amos to lay us out with withering criticism or to be on the receiving end of a Jeremiah from Jeremiah himself, or for John the Baptist to lay the axe at the root of the tree. Right-wing Christianity needs reformation and revival as desperately as anyone does. But what we don't need are the exhortations to be better from someone who likes tweets from Mr. and Mr. Gomorrah 2017. Here's another one just as ripe and just as juicy. Boz Tavidjian. So much truth in this quote by at Dave Barnhart. The great tragedy is that too much of the pro-life movement is about power, not life. Methodist pastor David Barnhart quotes, I quote from Methodist Pastor David Barnhart, the unborn are a convenient group of people to dot dot dot. Now there's a hot take for you. I tried to track down the rest of the quote from Methodist Pastor David Barnhart in order to find out why the unborn are such a convenient group to advocate for, with my guess being that they were too young to advocate for minimum wage laws. But I was unsuccessful. I did, however, find out that the good reverend has the preferred pronouns of he, him, which is something, I suppose. So let us limit ourselves to the comment that Boz made about it which is that the jab at pro-lifers had so much truth and that too much of the scare quotes pro-life movement, close scare quotes, was about power, not about life. Again, is the pro-life movement above criticism? Of course not. Is there no room for pointed admonitions to those who advocate for the unborn? Of course there is. But not from someone who is chumming around with the disease that is killing us. We do have a disease that is killing us, but Boz is not the doctor. He is a carrier. Ambulance chaser for Jesus. Anyway, back to the chase. We have had run-ins with the Wizard of Boz before. During one of the collisions that we had out here with an aspiring priestess victim, Boz jumped into the fray online, already knowing what side he was on and everything. And remember, at the time, he was working with an organization that claimed it could conduct objective third-party reviews of alleged incidents. 
It was obvious to us at the time that we were dealing with a hustler in search of a microphone and spotlight. He was no detached and objective investigator, but rather a hard partisan of the sort who refused to distinguish actual victims from those who claimed to be victims. Here's one example of my interaction with this kind of problem back in the day. Now, at the time, we could see this. At the time, others could see it, but didn't want us to talk about it too plainly. And still others couldn't see it at all. Now, here's my point, and it has to do with the nature of judicial blindness. As a general rule, those who could not see then that Boz was violating basic principles of biblical teaching will continue to demonstrate that same inability to see what is going on now. Unless you are prepared to say, let God be true and every establishment evangelical a liar, you will not be able to see the downgrade. The steeper the slope of the downgrade gets, the less you will be able to detect that you are sliding. Eventually, you will be in free fall, and at that time, you will be pleased to call it flying. But perhaps my meaning has escaped you. What I'm saying is this, barring a reformation from heaven of the sort that would be applauded by the likes of Jonathan Edwards, George Whitfield, Leonard Ravenhill, John Calvin, and A.W. Tozer, someone like Boz can continue to do whatever he wants. Provided he continues to mouth his zeitgeistian bromides, he is safe. Some major city could sponsor their annual pride parade and Boz could serve as the drum major for the Catamite cavalcade portion of it and all would still be well. I say well, but certain terms and conditions may apply. And so I continue to urge this book upon you. Mm -hmm.